the only areas that it blames on the original vertice is the start end. This is where I'll add supporting edges here on the sides. I can press Control R to add in and bring these in closer proximity. So I'll add in maybe another edge here at the bottom. Let's jump in and find out exactly what is sub demodeling. So let's start with what happens to each polygon in each face. So in its simplest form, what's happening here is each face is being multiplied by a factor of four. And I should be explicit in saying each quad face is being multiplied here by a factor of four. So a single face becomes four, which then becomes 16, all the way up to 64, so on and so forth. And what's happening is that's every single subdivision. So if I press Shift D X, just to move that in the X, you can see if I press Control One to add a subdivision modifier here, you can see exactly what's happening. And each one of these are the level viewport that I continue to add to this model. And as I increase, it will continue to increase the level of subdivision on that mesh. So ideally, this these will subdivide nicely, cleanly, and most importantly, predictably as quads. Now, what happens when you don't have quads? When you don't have quads or you have triangles like here, you see these two triangles here with this quad being split, or you have this n-gon, or, right, so we have this n-gon here, we have these two triangles here, and then we have this pole here. Poles are when you have more than four edges coming to a single point. So in this case, I have five edges coming to a single point. Then I can subdivide, and this is what happens with one sub-D iteration. Now, of course, what ends up happening is they are still all quads. However, they are less predictable and less uniform, and on curved surfaces cause artifacts. Are you tired of buying tutorial after tutorial, hoping the next one's going to unlock your 3D modeling skills? Well, I'm here to get you out of that loop. I'm Anwar Mohammed, and I'm currently working as a 3D artist and technical artist at Epic Games. Let's talk about how to create panels for your 3D models. One thing that kind of excites me the most is like, yeah, letting the sub D do the work. The distribution of edges is same throughout the entire model. And this, this is going to show you where you have these non planar faces. This course isn't a one and done thing. I'm going to continue to evolve it with your feedback. So ready to finally take your skills to the next level? Enroll now and I'll see you there. We have Suzanne the monkey here, which you can create simply by pressing Shift A and going to monkey. Okay, so this is the base mesh here. And with this base mesh here, you can see the differences between this version and the one on the left and the one on the right. Now, the one on the left is simply just right clicking and applying a shade smooth. Now, this is smoothing the faces and edges that are connected to each other. And with a smooth all, so if I just do a shade smooth, it shade smooths everything. Now, you'll notice that nothing changes here with the silhouette. So if I go to shade flat, everything is the same. And by right clicking and applying a shade smooth, it's still the same, but what's changing now is the shading. Then we actually have the subdivision applied here, okay? Now to apply a subdivision modifier, you can click the modifier list, type in subdivision, or a quick shortcut default is do like control one, two, or three, and that'll be adding a subdivision modifier here, okay? So now we have this subdivision modifier, and if you have this enabled, the in edit mode, if I press tab, now you can see we have our cage here, right? So this is our cage, which is the base mesh. So I'm still able, like, again, if I grab this ear part here 
and then I just press S for scale and just start to move things, you can see what starts to happen. I can start to manipulate the base form with the subdivision updating, okay? Another thing to keep in mind is the level of iterations that you're applying. This is applying at level one. So just one sub D iteration. As I continue to add more iterations, so now this is two and this is three, it is increasing again the polygon count by a factor of four. Now, most of the time, you're gonna be okay around two or three, okay? However, you'll, you'll notice sometimes if you get in close, actually like as an example, if you look at this, if I turn off wireframe on shade it and you look at these both at this camera position with them in full frame, they nearly look identical. There's basically no difference unless I really start pixel peeping here. Then where the extra subdivision comes in is where you get in the camera and really zoom in. Now I can start to see just a little bit, I can start to see the vertices and the edges here appearing on the silhouette. So that's where you won't see that with this third subdivision. So if you find yourself in a position where you need to increase subdivision, this is one of the benefits and the pros to having sub D models that you can increase the subdivision at will. Like if you zoomed in all the way on the ear and maybe you're like, oh, well right there in, in, in the ear, we kind of see a little bit of faceting. Boom, crank that up one more and you got four. Now let's look at what's actually happened happening to the mesh as we subdivide. So I like this example here where I just have this nice simple piece of geometry. Now with this piece of geometry here, again, you can take this and play with it yourself. And if you do shift D to duplicate and then Y just to move it, you can continue to do thing as you're, you're following along with this video. So with this video, or excuse me, with this piece of geometry, I can take this and apply a sub D modifier. And if this is what I want, then, well, this works great. So I'm going to hit numpad forward slash to isolate these two, then press alt middle mouse until I kind of get here in this uh, side view. Take a look at what's happening with the base mesh and the subdivided mesh, okay? One thing that's super important is it's very similar to splines and you are losing volume. Really the only areas that it kind of lands on the original vertice is the start end and this one here as it kind of transitions from this curve to this curve here. So volume loss is very important. Okay. Now, if I wanted to manipulate these just like with the spline modeling, if I go into tab to edit mode and I start to manipulate and I go into one for vertice, I can start to move things around. And if I hit Alt X to go, in, or excuse me, Alt Z to go into wireframe mode, then I can select these edges. And you can see what's happening is that base mesh now, I can move that base mesh vertice and it's impacting that slope and that line. Now, what if we want to maintain that original form? So this is great if you're like, oh, cool, I wanted something organic and I wanted something like this. I'll, this will be my new base mesh. Or if you're like, well, I want to hold these corners and hold these forms. And if I want to hold these corners, well, I can press Control R to add in and bring these in closer proximity to the corner. So these are called supporting edges, supporting corners, proximity edges. They're called all sorts of things. But really, you just want to make sure that the closer two edges, two faces, or two vertices are, the closer that they subdivide toward each other. So it allows you to maintain that original form. So the further away this becomes, you can see what's happening to that original form. All right. By the way, you'll notice these pink lines. If I hit N and I just select, uh, select these border edges like so, you can see that I have a mean crease value of set to one. That just means it ignores the subdivision, okay? So you can also select those edges and press Shift E and slide or bring those back down. You can see what, what happens. So if you have a, your own mesh that you're looking at, that's what I'm doing. I'm just applying creasing so it ignores it for that demo. So with this piece of geometry here, let's go back to this very first one that I had duplicated. And now I want to apply a sub D modifier and I want to hold its original form. So now we will look at the, the, the next one, which I've been talking about, which is supporting edges. So I add in those supporting edges. Great. So everything's looking good there. Maybe I keep this one here because I want it round. 
but now you'll see that it's losing these forms here at the corners. Well, this is where I'll add supporting edges here on the sides. And then I, you can see it's doing okay, but if I really want it to do a better job, this is where an even distribution of edges come in. So I'll have control R, middle mouse scroll to add in more edges here, click and then right click and boom, there you go. You see it now holds that form even better and then I can move a supporting edge here at the end. So the same thing will apply as I move that all the way down. So now without creasing, everything is looking and working as expected. And if you still see this faceting here, remember you right click and apply a shade smooth and there you go. Everything's looking as it's intended. So I have this corner that's being held here and I have this nice smooth transition on this bottom. And then now you can see actually this corner here is being pulled away from supporting this corner. So that's where an even distribution of edges are gonna come in. So I'll add in maybe another edge here at the bottom, not to impact this curve here. And then I'll add in maybe another two edges here and look at how it just brings that corner, that supporting corner back to support that original form. So you get something like this again. So it's working exactly as it should. So when you take all those concepts, right? So we're understanding what happens when we sub D and you take those main concepts, which is going to be primarily quads, holding corners and holding edges and an even distribution of edges, you get your ideal and perfect sub D model. And here you can see in this example, what happens where everything's kind of coming in. And if I press shift D to duplicate, right click, and I'll remove the modifier, take a look at how the original silhouette compared to the sub D version, okay? It's nearly identical, which is exactly what you want, okay? In some instances, you'll have this, you're like, well, I want this to be a, a smoother transition. That's fine, okay? But in most cases, you want your sub D to behave very, very similarly to the smooth or to the, the smooth shaded. So if I take a look at this smooth shaded one versus the sub D version, they look very similar in silhouette. And then it's just the sub D doing the last bit of work as, as it's needed. Yeah.